I eat too much pizza. So I've been doing photography and videography, graphic design for about four-ish years now. But in January was when I finally got my business set up. I got my LLC in place. And that's when I learned the whole other side of photography. And that is the business side. It's only been a little over a year since this whole business idea was even a thought. But I've learned a lot in the past year. And I kind of want to share some tips. Maybe you're starting a business. Maybe you're just looking to get into this photography thing, looking how to make money off of it. I wanted to share kind of some tips that helps me get through the day-to-day -day of running my business. This is probably the most important tip. It's something that I use every single day and that's track your spending and your income. Now, the, I mean down to everything, whether it's gas, whether it's family photos, whatever it is, make sure you have some type of receipt, some type of way that you can put it into a computer system. Just track all of it. Now, why do you wanna do this? Couple reasons. One, obvious one, taxes. With a business, you wanna be able to write off as much as you can as a business expense, whether it's gas for business work, whether it's uh, camera equipment, you wanna be able to track all that stuff. You wanna be able to accurately report your income just so you don't get bombed with a IRS bill or, or whatever. I still don't really understand taxes, but that's for another day. Two, it helps you kinda of know where you're at, not only monthly, but yearly and then lifetime. You can track your growth, you can track your seasonal income, how much comes from this, how much comes from seniors in the summer, how much comes from family photos in the fall. You can kind of track that and use that in other parts of your business to project growth, to see where you can improve, different things like that. So that's important to track all of that. And three, it holds you accountable. You know, you go to the end of the month and you realize, wow, I spent way too much money on stuff that I didn't really need at the time. And now I have this big expense coming up, this, you know, insurance bill or tax, whatever. And I can't pay it because I spent money on a new drone, a new computer, a new light all in like a month. You can see that on your budget sheet and kind of peg that so the next month you can kind of do do better, do something different. So let's go ahead and just take a look at, at this budget sheet that I have right here. Uh, I'll share this with you guys in the description. So I'll share a link so you guys can view it and then you can just file, make a copy and use it for your guys' business if that's something that you want to do. And so if we just go ahead and look at it here, it's, it's pretty simple. I'll kind of break it down just a little bit. So at the top we have expenses. These are our known expenses. So things um, you can put in here would be like a music license subscription. Um, so say you could put something like that and maybe that's 50 bucks a month. And then I put the date that I pay it as well. So I have the description of what it is, how much it costs, and then the date that I kind of recorded it, the date that it was taken out of my bank account. So you could have that, you could have, maybe you plan on buying, say a drone, maybe that's like 700 bucks, 800 bucks, whatever, you plan on buying that on the 15th. And then for me, I pay myself out of the business, so I would obviously have payroll twice a month. So payroll number like eight or whatever, and then like, you know, what I pay myself monthly. So uh, that would be like on the 15th and the 30th. So then we could just uh, drag that down like that and then change that. So that's like some known expenses. Then you can have potential expenses. Um, I don't use these known and potential ones a lot, but sometimes when I really need to know where my money is gonna end up, I use these. Uh, the most important thing that I use is actual expenses and actual income. So stuff that I'm actually gonna buy goes to my actual expenses. So obviously that music license subscription, we would put that on there. That would be like 50 bucks pay that on the first of every month. Then we could have, you know, maybe we just bought a website. We're just starting out, let's buy a website. So we can buy like the domain, maybe that's 20 bucks, maybe we bought that on the fourth. So you kind of get the picture, you put all that down and then what I do is I just highlight all this, get the total down here, the sum, and then I put it in my actual monthly expenses for what the entirety of those expenses are. So I know how much money I spent from beginning of the month to end of the month. And then I just have the date here. That just kind of tells me when was the last time I updated it? When was the last time I spent money? 
um, and budgeted that. So that's kind of where the expenses are. The income is the exact same thing. Obviously it's just income. So say I took family photos for John Johnson on the third. So that would be whatever, 400 bucks on the third. Go out, do that with all this stuff, however many you have. Uh, say there's like a $600, $500, uh, 3750 you know, just random stuff. Then you just highlight it. So this month we made $941.50. So we go ahead and put that in there. And then it helps, I think, to have a goal. So that's why I put uh, this goal under here, whether it's uh, I want to make, say I want to make $3,000 this month. Just put that on there. I do it for uh, my expenses as well. I don't know why it's not on here, but you could say I want to spend under 1,700. I want to spend under a thousand, something like that. Uh, so once you have all that, then you go keep scrolling down, and uh, you have this kind of calendar-looking thing here. So this is this SOMI thing here. It's start of the month income that I you don't have to. You don't have to. You you can you pick and choose what parts you want to use this. This is just kind of my. Uh, thought process when I actually budget. So I want to know where I started the month at. So say my account had like $9,000 or whatever in it at the start of the month. So then if we go up and we track, okay, expenses on the first. Yep, we had our music subscription. So I'd go down to this second bar right here and I'd go, okay, if we had $9,000 and we paid for that music subscription, that's minus 50, then we would have $8,950. So this is where you do the math of, you can see what you started with. I just put the equation in there and then on top of it, I put what my bank account would be at now, how much money I would have in that account now. So then we go up low, we go back up. Our next expense was on the fourth, but we had something here on the third. So on the third, we'd go 8,950 because that's what we finished with after paying that subscription and we would add $400 to it. So then that would be $9,350 if I think that's right. It, yes, it, it is. So then that's how much money we have. And then I know that we had an expense here on the fourth, which was the website domain. So we subtract $20 on the fourth. And so now we have $9,330. Do that for the whole month. Every time, like every time I spend money or make money, put it in my bank account, I go into my budget and I write it all down, get it all tracked, so I know where I'm at on a consistent basis. So, say we did that for the uh, whole month, or say it, say it was October 5th, then we'd go down here and we would do this is my plus minus chart, so I can see how much farther ahead or behind I am versus where I was last month. So last month, I ended up with $9,000 because that was my start of the month income. Therefore, now I can kind of judge where from the start of the month, where I end up at the end of the month. If I made money, if I lost money, that type of thing. So on the first, we only had a expense. So we would go minus, and then I describe what the expense was. It was the music subscription. That was a minus, so that was $50. So total plus minus for the month would be negative $50. So if we, again, we have a goal here, maybe we wanna be plus $2,000. So that's what, uh, that's what we wanna do for the month. We wanna be in the plus category by 2000. I color code this total plus minus uh, based on some different things. So this I'd like, I'd put red, obviously. You don't have to do that. I won't do it uh, for the sake of this video, but then we go down to the third and we had our family photos. So that was $400. So we'd put that in and then, so we were minus 50. So negative 50 plus 400 would be plus $350. And I put the word plus because it tries to format whatever. So we would be plus $350 now. So, you know, make it green or whatever. Then we had another, or another, uh, expense here, which was our website domain. That was $20. And so now we are still in the plus category, but not as much. Obviously we are uh, $20 shorter. So we're plus $330. So you can just kind of see where you're at, where you finish up in the month. 
You can go up here and see kind of when you spent what in like a calendar type setting. And then, you know, at the top there's, there's all those income and then there's the expenses. This really helped me. This really helps me with my business, just knowing where I'm going to end at for the month, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. And it holds me accountable. Like, okay, maybe I already bought this. Maybe I don't need to buy this, even though I have the money for it, it would make me negative for the month. Obviously you want to be making money every month. So it really holds me accountable. It's something I use every day and it's super important for me to track all this income and spending for my business. All right. Tip number two is to organize and plan. This is also very important. All these are important. I mean, if you want to run a business, you know, you got to, you got to make sure you're on top of things. So organize and plan. I use Google calendar and this handy dandy little book I got. Yes. It's bright pink. Yes, I spray painted it black. Yes, it's a terrible spray paint job. I have a better one, but I'm just waiting to run out on all the pages of this, but does the job either way. This I use for literally all of my planning, all of my stuff. I like, I write everything in here. I write storyboards. I write my routine for the day. I write uh, shot lists, all these different things all in here. And I use Google Calendar then to schedule my shoots because I always have my phone on me. It buzzes me a day before and then a couple hours before each shoot. So I know when I need to leave, I know what's coming up tomorrow. So for example, we dive back into the computer here. This is, so say this is my January, 2023 schedule. Say I, so I have a speaking event on January 20th. So I would go speak at event or whatever. And then you just go right here, you go to the time I'm speaking from say 11 to noon. And then, you know, you can color code it, do those different things and then have it set a couple reminders. So I usually do a day before always. And then if I really know that I need to remember it and I might forget, I'll add another one, save it. Then boom, you look at the month. Okay. 20th at 11, I am speaking at this event. I do this every time I book a shoot. There's been several times this summer where I've forgotten or I've kind of double booked and had to reschedule. And that's when I really made it a habit to put everything I book in this Google calendar as soon as I book them. Because once you get busy enough, things start slipping through the cracks. You start forgetting about, oh, I forgot I rescheduled this shoot to next Tuesday get all that stuff in your calendar. So that's kind of a bigger picture type organizing plan. The other thing I think is really important is to plan out your day. So I have a giant to-do list with all of the projects that I'm currently working on. It's, it's sitting there right behind me. I look at it every day. Um, it has all the projects, whether they are upcoming and scheduled or I'm still working on them. I still need to edit them, different things like that. But out of those, I can only get, you know, so much of them done in a day. So I write down, my routine, kind of five critical things every day. I've talked about this before on a couple podcasts, things like that, but I write down five things that I need to get done related to my business today. And that kind of helps me know where I'm going to end up, what my day is going to look like. And I can kind of schedule my routine around that. So when I wake up, I usually just kind of want to listen to music, get into the groove of things, wake up a little bit. I'll usually do some graphic design or photo editing, things that I don't need to listen to, such as like a video edit, just to kind of wake up because I know, okay, I have graphic design, I have video, and then I have photo. That kind of helps me plan out my day. So I know when to schedule what, when to work on what, and that just helps me get into a routine every day. I write down what I need to do and then I kind of schedule when I'm going to work on what thing. The other thing that helps me out, I just mentioned it, my to-do list. You can put deadlines on it. You can put all your projects there. So you kind of have a big board of everything that you need to do. And then when you're putting down your day calendar, you're like, what am I going to do today? You can just look over that board and you know exactly what to prioritize based on the deadlines, based on the workload that different thing. So these all three kind of work in tandem together to help me stay organized, help me plan out my day, my week and my month and you know, longer term things. So that's tip number two, organize plan. This cannot be overstated. You can't be over organized and you cannot over plan. Now tip number three is not anything material. It's not anything that you really do on a day to day basis physically, but tip number three is just discipline. When running your own business, when being your own boss, 
the amount of freedom you have can be kind of overwhelming and you can kind of take it for granted sometimes and you can kind of develop just a lack of discipline. It's super easy to say, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. I, got nothing. I don't want to do anything today because no one else is telling you what to do. I wake up every day. I don't talk to anybody. I'm just here alone in my apartment and I have to get up and decide to go do work because I don't, I don't have to do it. I don't have to come into an office. I don't have to report to anybody. This, it's just me, you know, on a computer and a, and a little journal here. So being disciplined is probably 80% of the reason why I am doing successful today because I force myself to get into a routine, to do my work when nobody else is telling me to. It's just that self-discipline that can really help you and is really important to put in a foundation of discipline when you're just at the beginning, just starting your business. Make a routine, make it uncomfortable because otherwise, if your routine's easy, if it's just, oh, I'll answer a couple emails here and there and then whenever I feel like working, I'll just work, chances are you're never gonna, you're never gonna feel like working. I get up, my routine is I wake up at 5 a.m. every day, I eat, I shower, I get ready, you know, kind of for the day and then I write down what I need to do today, I write down my critical things and then I kind of get to work on them I usually work until about noonish, take a lunch break, work in the afternoon, kind of take a little afternoon break. I usually try and get outside if it's nice, do something just kind of to get my, my brain off it and stop staring at a screen for so long. And then usually in the evenings, I'll turn on some TV, watch a sports game and, and work while I'm doing that. Getting up at 5 a.m. is not fun. Don't let anybody tell you that it is because it's not. Sleeping until you're ready to wake up is a lot more enjoyable. But that's the part of the being self-disciplined. Making it uncomfortable makes it that much more rewarding when you fulfill it, when you are disciplined. Because then when I wake up and I get all my work done by, say, noon, I have the rest of the day to do whatever I want. And that is the rewarding part of being up early and getting all that work done instead of all day being at my computer, maybe missing out on a chance to go have lunch with a friend, go outside, do something like that. Something that really helps me stay disciplined is incentivizing it. So for example, on my five critical things, I write down the streak, I write down the date, and then the streak of how many days in a row I can get where I knock out every one of those five things on that list. But there's also other things. I like to reward myself with, you know, maybe a small vacation, traveling a little bit, maybe taking the weekend off of working. Maybe if you make enough money, if you work hard enough, if you're disciplined enough, then you can justify, okay, I can spend money on XYZ luxury item, the drone, the new computer, whatever if I wake up early every morning, if I get this much money, that type of thing. Incentivizing your reason for discipline when the only person holding yourself accountable is you is a huge part to kind of help you get into that routine. And before you know it, it's a habit to be disciplined instead of a habit to be undisciplined. And as always, with anything, if you don't know what to do, if you're stuck on something, ask for help. I ask for help all the time, whether it's family, whether it's my business partner, whether it's whoever, I ask for help from experts that know more than me. If you guys have any questions for me on the budget, on the calendar, on whatever, on the critical things, whatever, I'll put my email in the description. You can go ahead and ask me. Again, I'm not an expert, but these are just some things that have really helped me kind of get to where I'm at today. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope you can take some value out of the calendar, the budget, whatever it is. I hope you can take some value away from this. If you're just looking to start a business, if you just started one and don't really know where to start with each individual facet of it, I hope this kind of helped you and I will see you guys in the next one.